What will you choose? I'm going to go with uh, something new, something borrowed, and something blue. That looks like a lovely Look at that. Rosewood, instrument. Rosewood neck. A Ooh. ten. A ten top. Ten top. Etched in. That's how you know you got something serious. 594, my favorite. Let's do it. Right on I'm with Brian, the PRS master. Could you? Would you call yourself that? Uh, I wouldn't, but you're welcome to. Um, I'll call him that. I'm. I'm. A, I'm just a guy, just a person. When when a guy says he's just a guy, that's a good guy right there. These are PRS guitars. That's a PRS Sanzera, and I want to ask you your opinion because you get to demo lots of different guitars. Primarily PRS, but you've probably played a lot of guitars. I've played a few. What, what does somebody look for? Doesn't matter, beginner, intermediate, advanced. What do you think somebody should look for when they're searching out a new guitar? It's a good question. Uh, and I think that's a lot of layers to it. Um, the basics that I think should go across uh, the board would be you want a guitar that stays in tune, mm -hmm. for sure, because otherwise, what's the point? Uh, ideally, you want to find something that fits your hand. Not there. Obviously, there's multiple neck shapes because what works for one person isn't, you know, necessarily what works for everybody. So finding a guitar that's comfortable for you, uh, you know, body thickness and all that stuff, and weight of the guitar, the balance of the guitar depends on the person too. Especially like with acoustics, when you get into, you know, some people like a thinner body acoustic, or yeah, they, you know, a double cutaway versus a single cutaway. If you play up high on the neck, uh, you know, a single cutaway sometimes is a little more difficult for your hand to, you know, to, to reach around. But um, then it can also affect the way you play up high, because I have a SC245, and I actually really enjoy playing up in this kind of like fifth position uh, with the single cut, because it makes my fingers slant, oh, and yeah. I get these I like weird you, licks. I don't mean you can't play up there, it's just yeah, different, yeah, so right. it really depends on, you know, some people just the access up the neck is everything to them. So yeah. it's like a, a, a single cutaway just is not their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're a beginner, you probably don't know these things. The main thing to do is go pick up a whole bunch of guitars and get a feel for all of them. And, and usually when one feels right, you'll know. And as far as sound goes, mm. it's totally subjective at a, at a certain point, you know, because, the, you know, that's why there's so many different things out there. I usually ask people, like, what kind of music do you listen to? What players do you like? You know, it's like, okay. do they like modern players? Like, would a 24 fret trem guitar make more sense? Um, like, there's no sense in adding a trem if nothing they listen to. You're a blues to, guy if, or if, something. Yeah, it's like, if they're, you know, their favorite players or jazz players, it's like the trem isn't going to help them any. And it could cause, I do, I, I play a lot more stop tails now because I do a lot of stuff where I'm bending notes mm -hmm. and... With notes on the bass, mm -hmm. and so it's not well, affecting the even a well-designed trem. Note. Just by the physics of it, when you bend one note, it pulls the trem forward, so all the other notes go just a little bit flat. So maybe a guitar player that likes to accompany themselves, singer-songwriter, could consider a stop tail. Yeah, I think a lot of country players who do a lot of those double stop bends. 
like yeah. stock tail works better because you don't, and, and of course there's exceptions to that rule, but, sure. um, but doing so many bends where you're also using stationary notes, uh, the trem can, you know, kind of throw a wrench into that sometimes. I see. So basically somebody sits down to try out a guitar, what you're looking for, aside from comfort, neck feel, is just playing the guitar, not just where you're comfortable, but where you aren't comfortable. I think when you sit down in a guitar store, you tend to play things that are comfortable. What is the first thing that you play when you pick up a guitar right now? You just picked up this guitar. What do yeah, you think? I, I mean, I know I have something. I think everybody does. But I, um, I probably do this kind of like A chord. <laughs> of A dominant descending and I do this like E major 9 chord a lot so I'm walking up this like A I've got the open A G and high E strings and then I'm going through triads really of a, of a D major scale I'm like playing A like it's a 5 chord to that little E major 9 thing. And I think part of it is that those two, the combination of the open strings, mm -hmm. and as you move up the neck, fretting notes, but where the open strings are still ringing out, and a chord like this where there's such a distance between there is a good indicator of if the guitar is fully in tune and if the guitar is intonated properly. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, t a, like a habit of checking to make sure it's ready to play and in tune all the way up the neck. Because it's one thing to be in tune down here, another thing altogether to be in tune up here, and For another sure. thing altogether to be in tune between both, where the open strings and you know the notes up the fretboard. So if there's an intonation issue, that's gonna really show it off. Just playing all along the neck, I think people will tend to get nervous in guitar stores and then kind of stick to whatever. Maybe they're only comfortable up here, but they don't yeah. consider you know the the bar shape here is, just feels off so um even things like knob layout and all that stuff is right. different for everybody like like with the the 594 or any four knob guitar mm -hmm. um there's pros and cons to it i grew up playing guitars with a single volume knob mm -hmm. so it takes me a while to get the hang of knowing you know thinking about which pickup i'm on and instantly like, if i want to go grab a volume knob to to bring it all the way open or turn it down really quick right um remembering which one i'm on so this is takes a little more time for me but what it does is also enables you in the center position to be able to do combinations where your your two pickups are at different volumes or you roll a tone like guys like larry carlton right uses that position and his signature sound is a blend of those two pickups but where he adjusts them you can't really do a larry carlton kind of thing without a four knob guitar and and or even doing the thing where one volume is off and one is on and, and you yeah. do that you know if it, it's there isn't one design that works for everybody it's kind of figuring out whether you like uh you know what sounds you go for and i always go to like what players do you like is right. a great place to that's start that's a good barometer yeah you know and um like if somebody's like my favorite player is carlos santana it's pretty easy to you well, know, I think PRS could definitely yeah. help out. Uh, I also think uh, one last thing that I'll ask you about is what's the, what would you say like your 30 second differences between a semi hollow or a hollow body versus a solid body? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you hear a lot of it playing it acoustically and it's a feel difference. There's a different resonance there for yeah. sure. The light and lightness also. Oh, yeah. It's a part yeah, of yeah, it. Yeah, so, like, sure. I'm playing a chord. Mm -hmm. just feels light which is like airy that's that's what I've always felt from a, uh, any kind of hollow or semi hollow guitar is just the lightness and it tends to affect your playing so that comes back to how do you find a new guitar just play and you know see how it affects your playing because I play differently on different even different PRS models like I'll play kind of a more jazzy vibe with a guitar like this than I would with like a 594 or custom 24, which I kind of sure, get more yeah. aggressive. Yeah, the, uh, any guitar that you pick up is going to have a, a it's going to push you into it, whether it's the way the neck feels, whether it's the, the sound that you're getting out of the pickups, 
Um, obviously, single coils versus humbuckers, you know, take you to a different territory, and it should make you mm-hmm. play different. You kind of adjust how you play, how hard you attack. Um, uh, the types of songs you play tend to, you know, gravitate towards that. One thing I noticed with hollow bodies and semi hollows, it really changes the mid range of the guitar to me. Mm-hmm. That's kind of where I hear it the most, um, and it's not necessarily better or worse either way it's just different so Mm -hmm. um and there are some guitars that i think sound great as semi-hollow um and other ones that i feel work best as a solid body you know yeah um one thing that always strikes me when i'm playing a semi-hollow that can be strange is there's so much resonance that happens in a uh, uh, i have a mirror semi-hollow that this does all the time yeah that i feel puff of air like shooting out you know how like if you stand near a kick drum yeah and every time they hit like a rush of air comes out of the if they have a hole in the front of the head right and you feel this on your leg and you're like what's that? Oh, you know oh, i feel it on my forearm <laughs> like i'll be playing and every once in a while the guitar just vibrates in a certain way that it sends out like this small rush so is of that air. when you're picking you, you, it could be it or just, like at the, yeah it hit a chord or something at a yeah. gig and you're like all of a sudden you feel like it feels like somebody like just blew on your arm and it kind of weirds yeah. you out like, what is that it's, it's the ghost of some ancient guitar players yeah. but possessing it, it, you. <laughs> obviously, it means that something is... I mean, there's enough resonance in that guitar that it's pushing air right, through right. it. Right, Something about an F-hole. Just I, like, I, I love the way it looks. Yeah. I mean, they, people have made guitars with painted F-holes on just because... Yeah, exactly. It, I think Paul Gilbert's... Paul Gilbert's on yeah, yeah. the white. It looks like a... Like a kind of piano look. And some of the old Gretsch, like Country Gentlemen's, like the, the George Harrison model had painted on F-hole. Even though it was... A semi hollow guitar, right? Um, but and people did that sometimes also to cut down feedback. Okay. But, you know, semi hollow and hollow body guitars on really loud stage situations and high volume situations mm-hmm. can be a little bit more prone to feedback because the the sound coming from the amplifier actually gets in the same way it would get inside an acoustic guitar mm-hmm. and like the, whatever resonant just gets that loud boom. And it, yeah yeah um i've never had that issue with with most i mean maybe a fully hollow guitar right or laminate top like all these are this is solid a solid piece it's the same thickness of the maple that you find on this uh-huh. and they put a chunk of maple on top and a chunk chunk of maple on the back and they're both fully carved inside and out so nice. this is not like a laminate top. Right. Um, um, it's a little bit more rigid, which you're going to have less problems with feedback because of that. So that could be the last point that we close on is consider your situation. What's your musical environment that you're most going to find yourself in with, uh, with your new baby? Yeah. New guitar. Should we take it out with a jam? <coughs> sure. Right on. What I do with my pick? All right. How about... Uh, <laughs> Love E minor. Guitar player's the favorite key. Of all keys. <laughs> 